Wow, it found a lot of vulnerabilities. Ooh, I'm a horrible developer. Hello beautiful people and welcome to another video of 100 days of Kubernetes, the challenge where we aim to learn something new related to Kubernetes across 100 days and me sharing with you here right on my YouTube channel. Now if you watched the previous video on shift left and shifting security or testing and testing left, then you might find this video particularly useful. Now in this video we're going to explore Sneak. What is Sneak? What is the platform? Why would we use it? How do we use it? When do we use it? Now I'm going to show you how you can get started with Sneak and the value Sneak provides to everybody out there using open source tools, right? <laughs> Now, if you're completely new to shifting security left, shift left, I suggest you to check out my previous video, which you can find up there somewhere linked. <laughs> now, I just want to give a really special shout out to Sneak and the marketing team and community team over there. I'm doing this video partially in response to them having done a really generous donation of a bit of a thousand dollars to give India in response to the current situation within India. Now that was really nice of them. It's, this video itself is not sponsored, but they have done a really generous donation to Give India. So I just want to give them a shout out for that. I'm also in the process right now of becoming a sneak ambassador. Now I'm not just creating this video because of that. I've also created this comparison over here between sneak, Agro security and Sysdic, which I'm um, operating, let's say, in a similar field. And I especially like sneak. So this is obviously not a specific endorsement and it's not saying that the other tools are not also great. So this has a bunch of amazing, amazing tutorials and resources out there. So check out their blog as well. But I've done this comparison between them during my time at Codefresh and I especially like sneak. So if you're curious about how these different tools compare, I've linked the comparison below and also in the resource page on the Notion page, also linked below. So check that out if you're curious to learn more. So I'm right now on the Sneak website, as you can see, at sneak.io. Now it's pronounced Sneak. I thought at the beginning it's pronounced Snake, but it's pronounced Sneak. It's Sneak, Sneak, Sneak. Anyway, <laughs> you get what I mean. Um, now this is a tool that allows you to scan your repositories for vulnerabilities. So throughout your development process, throughout your development lifecycle, and that includes everything from developing the code to deploying and managing those applications. Uh, it allows you to scan for vulnerabilities and fix those vulnerabilities. So by using Sneak early on in the development process, you can find bugs and vulnerabilities early before you deploy your application and it will potentially have huge security flaws. So we will prevent that. We are aiming to prevent that. Now, Sneak itself is marketing four different products, Sneak Open Source, Sneak Code, Sneak Container, Sneak Infrastructure as Code. So as you can see, we can use it to check our open source tools and dependencies for vulnerabilities, but we can also use it to check our infrastructure as code and our containers and cloud native tools for vulnerabilities. Now, here's the pricing, which is obviously interesting. Let's check it out for a second, just to make sure that we can actually use it. So there's a free version where you have limited tests, limited basically usage capacity. So we're gonna be using that you can use it right away. Again, I highly suggest you that you try to use to find these tools that have free versions available and use them because once you're at a job, you will be expected to be familiar with some of these tools and will know how to navigate those tools. So again, this is not just me marketing a product, but there's actually a practical reason behind, and I'm not actually marketing this product, but it's a practical learning experience reason behind of why you should maybe try out these different tools so it's not just that there's actually a financial interest from somebody it's just that with this you will get a lot of experience now they have nice documentation and we're going to check out the client in a section in a section in a second and then they also have really amazing learn guides and especially Liren, who's a developer advocate at sneak is producing a lot a lot of amazing front-end, React, Node.js, security blogs. So when you sign up to Sneak for the first time, you have four different options on how you can sign up. You can either sign up with GitHub, Bitbucket, your Google account or Docker ID. This is like any uh, 
single sign-on other account system thing <laughs> where you just like how you use Google to sign up in probably a bunch a bunch of different platforms you can use here also github and Google and other accounts now I'm gonna use github in this case and this will redirect me to the section telling the dog <laughs> I know how to call it. What is this called? Um, this mascot. And I want to use GitHub because that's where my repository lives that we're going to use. So, is it a public and private repositories? Public repositories only. I only want to scan public repositories, so I'm going to keep it that. It's nice that you can also scan private repositories. In my case, I really only want to focus on public ones. Also, most of my repositories are public. So, let's hit continue and uh, what personal data is allowed to read and so on. You can find the information there. Now let's authorize it. I'm gonna use my password. I'm gonna use my password and confirm. And here's my dashboard. So the CI is really straightforward. You just use sneak and then you specify the command but first i have to install it because i only used it at my previous computer so getting started with the cli install the sneak cli okay npm install sneak we're gonna do that now okay so let's run it with sudo right okay this should work now. So now it's installed and I can run sneak and it will give me different options on using sneak, right? So I first have to authenticate. Wow, there are really a lot of different options. But see, the nice thing is that this is really comprehensive documentation that you get once you run sneak. So when you're new to CLIs, nobody expects you to know actually the different commands. I'm still looking up Helm commands, even though I'm using Helm since nine months ten months so just run the tool and it will give you those different options right as simple as that now we want to authenticate let's go ahead using the api token so visit your sneak account settings api token click to show this is my api key which i'm going to remove once this is over so don't even try to log in so, sneak config set api equals okay so we run sneak config api set config config set api config set api and here i'm gonna place my api key and then i'm gonna run it API updated. So, sneak test help. What can I do with it? Obviously, I'm not going to explore all of them. I'm just going to run with an report with a sneak test. What's going to happen? Is something going to happen? <gasps> it's analyzing it. So, if. Wow, it found a lot of vulnerabilities. Ooh. I'm a horrible developer. <laughs> okay, this is obviously not pretty, but it will help me to go through it. Prototype pollution and fix it. And that's what good developers do. <laughs> or at least as much as I can actually fix. Maybe some of it is actually dependencies of dependencies that I can't really fix. So, like mentioned, if you can't log in with sneak off you just look for your api token and then you can authenticate with that and it's pretty straightforward so you can use it instead and that's basically how you can use the cli now in addition to the cli we can use the ui and i'm going to show you that now now in the dashboard i'm just going to go ahead and i'm going to find my react article display application where is it react toggle i have definitely too many random react article display there it is okay now at custom file location 
No, I don't think I have that. Add selected repository. Let's add that to my sneak account. And as we can see here right away, I have five high vulnerabilities in my Docker file actually, which is not good. And one in my GitLab. Is this my GitLab folder? Can we not see this please? Okay. Let's check what's wrong within my Docker file. So, here it tells me which dependencies are bad, are evil. Now you can go through all of this, but what I really like about Sneak is that you can just hit open a fix PR. Isn't that amazing? So let's hope it's gonna fix it for me. Open a fix PR. Okay. Let's see, what is it supposed to change? What does it want to change? Oh, it's gonna change my engine X version. So that's maybe the problem. Good, good. Let's merge it, right? What could go wrong? <laughs> no, let's go ahead and merge it. And let's do it. Let's delete this branch. Awesome. Let's go back to sneak. So in my projects, that should lead me to my repositories, right? This is this one. So what if I refresh now? Does it still have the same vulnerability? It only has one high vulnerability now. See, that's how easy it is to fix things within your application. <laughs> how easy it is to fix things. Now, sneak makes it with those pull requests extremely easy. And it's not something, it's not a type of automation you have in other similar tools and projects. So you can really easily go ahead and do that. Now, what can I find in integrations? <laughs> as you can see, it has a bunch of different integrations that you can use as well. Woo! Now, I hope this gave you a nice overview on how you can use Sneak to implement shifting security left best practices and how you can use it just as an introduction to how you can get started using it even if it's just to check some of your open source some of your example projects for vulnerabilities and finding ways on how you can fix those vulnerabilities because throughout that process you will actually learn a lot however once you have our application right here let's open that as you can see lots of vulnerabilities <laughs> um, so once we have over here our application you can see that there are manifests, right? Some Kubernetes manifests, a deployment YAML, and a service YAML file, as well as our Helm chart. Now, obviously at this point, I've already introduced into those manifests the vulnerabilities that from my code base that you can see over here. So if I don't fix those early, they will persist throughout me deploying that application, right? I can't fix them once I'm deploying the application, whether that's a microservice application or that's just the application, just a container image. Similarly, if I'm introducing some vulnerabilities within my Docker file, I will have vulnerabilities within my Docker container and I will introduce those into my deployments. I obviously do not want to do that. I want to fix the vulnerabilities that I do have as early on as possible so they are not within my container image, or my Docker file and then my Docker container nor later on in my Kubernetes manifests. Separately, you can do a lot of things wrong within your Kubernetes manifests, right? This is just an example deployment and there are things, a lot of things actually that you can improve. So I just want to go over really quickly another call, another tool, uh, another tool called Daytree. Now Daytree allows you to check your Kubernetes manifests, whether those are Helm charts, cube, pure Kubernetes manifests or customized files that render into YAML manifests. You can use it to check the layout, to check your YAML files and see whether or not you're using best practices and you're implementing uh, best practices that are basically gathered from different reports and implemented into the tree. So going here to the tree, you can implement it, you can install it with just one command. They have also really easy to follow docs. It's really straightforward. And once you have installed it, you can just go ahead. So with the tree, you can have here see those different commands it's pretty straightforward so we're just going to say that we test and we say manifests that's the folder we want to test 
and then we say deployment yaml and now it's testing my deployment yaml file and see if there are any rules that i'm missing and how many rules actually passed now you can go ahead to this login link and actually modify the rules that i use i can also then check my other file my service yaml file and test that as well right and check that for vulnerabilities now in this case it only failed one of the rules for a service yaml file but as you can see i can improve a lot within my deployment file so my policy checks the policies that I implemented actually did not pass now i highly suggest you to check out the other video which is up there in the corner <laughs> on day three if you're curious on how to use that if this little comparison was useful and it gave you some insights in how you can implement tools such as Sneak and Day3 for shifting security left within your team, within your org, or just your personal projects, then please do hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos. I also have a weekly DevOps newsletter where I share free amazing learning resources from across the DevOps space right to your inbox on a weekly basis. Now, the newsletter itself is for free, but you can also support my content through the paid version if you would like to, and I would highly appreciate it. It. Otherwise, if you have any comments, feedback, thoughts, any questions, or any tools that I should explore with upcoming videos, please comment those below. I highly rely on your input. Also, make sure to join the community chat and get involved in the conversations there. I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Have a lovely day. Bye bye.